YouTube channels are getting hacked and it is becoming a bigger concern for content creators and viewers right now because big, well-known, popular channels are getting hit in these attacks. Malicious actors are using new tactics to get into accounts, but there are some really important preventative measures that you can take as you are watching this video, like follow along to protect your account, whether you upload videos or you just log into your account to watch them. See, attackers use several different attack vectors to get access to a YouTube account. So taking one step to minimize risk is not really going to work. It's kind of like locking your front door, but you leave your garage door open. One door doesn't work, it's locked. So a thief would try another door and they would just walk in through your garage. The same thing goes for online accounts. You can use different passwords all day long, but if you download malware, then you're still gonna get owned. So here are three major steps that you can take today, broken down with recommendations to protect your account. I'm super excited because this episode is in partnership with Yubico, and you will see why this works so well as one of the steps that you need to take. I will be using a desktop browser to show you everything in this video. Let's go ahead and start with locking up your YouTube account. Now, a YouTube account is generally associated with a Google account, and we are going to assume that the Google account login is a Gmail email address. You can see what email address you use to log into YouTube by clicking on your profile picture in the top right corner and then clicking on settings. This page will load and it'll show you what email address you use and it will have a link to your Google account settings page. So click on that link. This is where you will have full control over your Google account. You wanna make sure this account is all straightened out before we move on, because if this Google account gets hacked, then somebody could have access to your linked YouTube account. Let's start with the personal information page, the personal info page. Scroll down to the password setting. Now, if you are reusing this password somewhere else, like it's the same password you use on your Twitter account or something as well, go ahead and change it right now. Change it to something long, use multiple words, use symbols, letters and numbers, etc. I have done many, many a video about passwords that you should use as references for generating a strong, complicated password. And I also talk about how to use a password manager to store and protect your passwords so you don't have to worry about forgetting them. Next, click on the security page. This page will give you a security checkup. It's a quick look at all of your security settings for this Google account and potential threat vectors you might wanna close. Those are your garage doors. Now this page is where you can check where you are signed in and how you are signed in. So from the top, we'll go top to bottom. We have two-step verification. After this video, check out my recent videos about 2FA to get a really in-depth explanation on this, but the TLDR is this. You know how sometimes you log into a website with your username and password, then it prompts you to type in a six-digit code that was sent to your phone number. You got a text message. That's two-factor authentication. It's a second step in the login that verifies you are who you say you are past the password step. So it's a second step, two factor. That way, if somebody has your password, they would also need that six digit code to log in. You want to enable 2FA if it is not already turned on. This is so important. On the 2FA page, you can choose how you receive those codes. So the first option I would recommend is using an authenticator app. Without getting too much into the nitty gritty, because there's a lot I could go over with just 2FA codes, this first option will generate codes inside an application on your smartphone, rather than sending them to you via text message. Now we already know that people can steal phone numbers and get text messages redirected to their own phones. This is called SIM swapping. So to prevent that from happening, you can use an app installed on your device to get the codes instead. Better yet, they work even if your phone is offline. So if you can't get text for some reason, you can just open the app and get your code that way instead. Generally, authenticator apps all work the same, though some do come with extra bells and whistles that you can pick and choose from depending on your needs. I recommend Authy or Google Authenticator. Both are free, both are cross-platform applications. When you first download the app, it won't have anything in it, so you need to pair it with your Google account 
and any other accounts you wanna set up 2FA with. Now to do so, you go over to your Google account in your browser, hopefully on your laptop or on your computer, and choose add the authenticator app and follow the on-screen directions, which will usually tell you to open the authenticator app on your phone, click plus to add a new account, take a photo of a QR code that shows up on your Google account settings page, and voila, that's all you really have to do. Now, anytime you log into your Google account via a new computer, you will need to enter a code that's generated in this app. That code will change every several seconds, which means that you will need to have that phone with that code in order to unlock your account. Now, the bad part of these codes is that they can be stolen. If a malicious actor can see that code, whether they're spying on you over your shoulder in person, like at a coffee shop, or they see it on your phone specifically, or you accidentally type that code into a malicious website that looks like a legit login page, it could be stolen. You do have to be very careful about where you type these codes in and make sure to never ever hand them over to anyone. Even though they change every few seconds, it's still so important because that's all the time that an attacker would need to steal one of those codes. So we do have some alternatives. So the first alternative is Google. Google gives you the option to have a prompt set to your phone that asks you to verify a login. And this can be used as a second factor as well. But if you choose to use this option, you need to be aware of a problem called 2FA fatigue. If you see these kind of prompts pop up on your phone, you need to make absolutely sure that you are the person who's trying to sign in before clicking yes or verify on your phone screen. If you just click yes, just to get the pop-up off of your screen, or if it keeps on popping up and eventually you get annoyed and you just hit yes, and you don't know why it was there in the first place, you could be authorizing another person to sign into your Google account. 2FA fatigue sounds like one of those things that you would never fall for, but this has actually been used in recent attacks against really big corporations and employees are falling for it. Now the absolute best 2FA protection is using a security key like this one. This is a Yubi key. It's a hardware key that replaces the need to type in a code. All you have to do is sync one of these keys with your Google account. So anytime you need to log into your account on a new machine, you will have to also plug in this device to that machine to tell it that you not only know your password, but you also hold the key as well. Now, YubiKeys are highly recommended for content creators since 2FA codes can be stolen. When you use a YubiKey with your Google account, you don't see any codes pop up on the screen. You don't have to type in any codes. It does not put any codes out onto the web page as you log in. Instead, it uses a special handshake set up between the website and the physical key. So all you have to do is touch the key right there to validate that it's actually in your possession. If an attacker tries to get you to log into a fake spoofed YouTube website that's not actually youtube.com, the YubiKey is not going to work because it won't recognize the website when it authenticates with that handshake. That means even if an attacker steals your username and your password, they would get stuck at the 2FA page because I'm assuming you have not given them your hardware key. I have a bunch of YubiKeys because I have purchased my own throughout the years. They have no subscription fee. You buy it once and then you can use the same key for any websites that support 2FA via hardware keys. And you only need to use it whenever you need to re-authenticate or re-log in. So that means that you don't need to use it every single day on your normal machines. But if you get a new phone or a laptop, you will need to have your key ready since your Google account is not gonna recognize this new device. That prevents attackers from logging into your account on a new device too. Now, if you're worried about losing your key, and side note, this is a lightning version, so you can plug this directly into an iPhone, you can grab yourself a second one and set that one up on your Google account too. And they don't have to be the same one. So you could get one that's USB-C and one that's lightning, and then you can store the secondary one somewhere safe. I actually highly, highly recommend that you do this. That way, if the first one gets destroyed or lost or stolen, you can log in with your secondary key revoke the primary one that got misplaced or lost, and you still have access to your account. Even better, I have a coupon code just for my viewers. Use the code Shannon Moore 
course for $5 off any YubiKey 5 series or security series purchase. Huge thank you to Yubico, not only for keeping us more secure online, but also for hooking up my viewers with a very sweet discount code. Now, what happens if you lose both of your keys or your phone with your Authenticator app? This is where backup codes come into play. These are eight digit codes. They are different from the six digit 2FA codes that's generated in an Authenticator app, and these can be used to log into your account if you lose access. You get 10 different codes, and if you end up using them all, you can refresh and create 10 new ones, but each of them can only be used once and then it's burned. So you only get 10 tries. You will want to copy these codes and store them safely. If for any reason you lose your 2FA key or your codes, these backup codes are your last resort to get into your account. So print them out, keep them secret, keep them safe like Gandalf says, and don't lose them. Now, would you like more in-depth information about 2FA hardware keys? I've got tons of videos linked down below on every Thing you need to know to choose one and why they work so well for account protection. Other things to check in the security page are like revoking and removing any old devices that are currently signed into your Google account, remove or revoke any third-party apps or linked accounts that you no longer use or need, and you have just made your Google and YouTube account a lot more secure by going through those steps. But YouTube accounts are still getting hacked, even with 2FA turned on. What's going on? Well, 2FA is your first defense, but again, don't leave any doors open. You don't wanna leave your garage door open. We also need to consider other vectors of attack. So let's chat about email. Your YouTube account is associated with an email address. That's what you use to log in. Ensure that email address is a private one that is only used to sign into your YouTube account. If you use this email account to get emails from viewers or from brands that wanna work with you or from Google itself, not only could you miss important emails about your YouTube account, but it could also be used to steal your account. So my pro tip here is do not publicize the email address you use to log into your YouTube account. See, attackers create realistic looking emails and they send them to whatever email address they can find for you. You've already protected this email account via the steps we went through, but no one needs to know that account. If an attacker knows what email address you use to log into YouTube, they could start emailing you at that email address with really realistic looking emails that look like they are coming from Google and YouTube, and they could try to get you to click on malicious links in the email or get you to download malware. Now, if you keep your login email address private and publicize an email address that's specifically created for like public inquiries, it would be a dead giveaway if an attacker tried to send your public email address an email that looks like it's coming from YouTube because YouTube is only gonna send you emails to the email address you use to sign in, not some random email address that you just created and used for your viewers to send in questions. Wouldn't that be weird? That's a red flag. Now, if you do get emails to your private email address that seem to come from Google or YouTube, you still should not click on anything in that email. YouTube never sends documents via email for you to download and anything you need to know about your account can be accessed via the YouTube Studio app or on the website, which is studio.youtube.com. If they have anything that they want you to know, it's going to pop up on that main page. So you really don't have to click on anything in email. You don't need to click on any links in the email to access that same information. And the same thing goes for Google AdSense or Google Payments for content creators. You can access everything you need to know via the AdSense website. Now you may think that if the email address in the from line says that it's from somebody at google.com or at at youtube.com, then it's legitimate. But nowadays, that's not the case. Email addresses can be spoofed and they look so, so realistic and legitimate. So they look like they're coming from google.com or youtube.com, but are really coming from an attacker's email address. Now you can check the actual email address by clicking on the three little dots in the email and clicking on show original. This will show you whether or not the email passed all of Gmail's checks. If it did, it says pass. If not, it says fail or soft fail. But even then, this is not a 100% surefire way to tell if an email is legit or not. So it's best to just not click on any links or download anything from email. 
Recently, a phishing campaign has hit many creators' email inboxes, and it looks like a YouTube PSA email about changes that they are making to the platform. The emails can look so similar to a YouTube email that creators are falling for it and clicking on links within the email. Creators who have received this email have posted screenshots of it online for others to see as a warning about how legitimate these look. So be incredibly careful about what you choose to click on in emails and just don't click on any of the things. All right, you have protected and privatized your login email address, but attackers have gotten smart and they have started sending realistic looking brand deals or sponsorship inquiries to YouTube creator public email addresses. Now these often look really legit and they look too good to be true, but they have been asking creators to download media kit documents that are not actually contracts or descriptions of a brand deal. They're actually malware. Now these contain viruses or like Trojans that are downloadables that once on your machine, exfiltrate keyboard strokes, they can take screenshots of displays, or they can steal login sessions from cookies. Now I did a whole video explaining how cookies work. TLDR cookies are the special sauce that lets you stay signed into websites while you browse the internet. And they make it so when you click from one page to another on a website like youtube.com, you don't have to re-sign in every single time the page refreshes. Your current logged in session is memorized by your computer and it keeps you signed in until you force it to forget your session, which you can do by telling your browser like Chrome to delete cookies and sign you out every time you close the browser. You can tell it to sign out of everything every 30 days, etc. Now banks do this automatically on their websites, forcing a sign out after like five minutes or so of inactivity. This is to force the session to expire. Cookies are great because they keep you logged in and they make browsing convenient, but an attacker can also steal your logged in session from your computer by stealing them through malware. So if an attacker gets you to download malware that can steal these cookies, then as long as your session is valid and it's logged in, they could straight up copy and paste it over to their own computer and pretend to be you already logged in. This is how attackers are bypassing two-factor authentication. And this is also how our friends over at Linus Tech recently got hacked. And I applaud them for being so transparent about what happened because that's helping educate the entire community of content creators online. Now in their case, they also have a very big business account. So several people have access to the YouTube channel. Each person who had access could also do things like delete videos or start live streams or or upload new videos, etc. So for these kind of accounts, you should limit who has access. Audit those accounts and give them two-factor authentication keys too. Give them a special email address that's private that is only used for logging into YouTube and choose who has limited access and what kind of access that you wanna give them. Now, it may make things a little bit less convenient, but much of the malware being distributed this way attacks Windows computers. So admins might want to consider only accessing your YouTube YouTube accounts from machines that are better protected and sandboxed, like your phone running Android or iOS, or from a desktop using an alternative operating system. One way to streamline this is by using something like a Chromebook for accessing the YouTube account. This would make it harder for an attacker to steal session cookies because they would need to set up specialized malware to be distributed for all of those different operating systems. But usually it's only Windows that is getting targeted. When YouTube accounts get hacked, it's a very stressful situation. If you are a content creator, you could lose valuable days or even weeks of views and growth. It could hurt your reputation or destroy years of work. YouTube does help creators fix their channels after a hack, but the damage is done. Creators lose momentum, they lose subscribers when a hack happens, and it could take YouTube days or weeks to recover your account. So it's best to just prevent it as best you can before it happens. So what did we learn today on this episode? Well, by using good security hygiene for your email, deleting session cookies as soon as you feel comfortable doing, and using two-factor authentication to lock up your login account, you are taking crucial steps that defend against common tactics. And you can actually take these steps and use them on a variety of other websites too, not just YouTube. 
We have learned in the last couple of years that the way these hacks happen changes over time, but these are the current ways that we have seen accounts get hacked. Now, I would love to know what your recommendations are. Leave them down below in the comments and check out these videos for more security tips. Thanks for watching. Bye, y'all.